Right now we have a gentleman who on Saturday got great news. He will be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. You heard it on the broadcast of UFC Fight Night 108 out there in Nashville, Tennessee. This is the second person who uh, has been announced by the UFC for uh, induction this summer. First one being Uriah Faber. Second one is Maurice Smith, a former ISKA World Muay Thai heavyweight champ, World Kickboxing Association, their heavyweight champ as well, and, of course, UFC heavyweight champion. Joining us now is Maurice Smith. Maurice Smith. Hello, Maurice. How you doing? I'm fine. You missed out so many more titles. You missed out the WKC light heavyweight champion, the extreme, extreme. combat heavyweight <laughs> That's champion. That's right. That's right. You're right. <laughs> if you're going to give me credit, give me credit for all that I've done. He uh, was also the, the, small thing. the Black Belt right. Magazine Full Contact Fighter of the Year, Most Outstanding Fighter, according to Dave Meltzer's World uh, sorry, Wrestling Observer Newsletter. See? So Now you're coming around. Now you're doing good. <laughs> now you're coming good. There you go. A lot yeah. of accolades out there. <laughs> he, uh, well, congratulations, Maurice. Uh, tell us about what when you heard. I imagine it was Saturday like everyone else, or maybe you got a, a an early call. But what, what was that call like to, to get that, uh, you know, to get that type of news? Well, actually, I, got a, I did get an early call um, about, I think it was, I guess it was maybe Tuesday or Monday. I'm not quite sure. Um, I was quite surprised. I, I didn't think that. I didn't because I, I didn't know what the criteria was to be a Hall of Fame person. So I didn't. So I was quite surprised. Uh, but then after I inquired about it, they told me the reason why. I said, "Okay, well then there you go." Can you share what what did they officially tell you as a, as the reason why? Was there something that stood out well, amongst the everything else? Says to me, okay, the officially said to me that the reason why I became I got to be called Chosen Hall of Fame because I, in other people's minds, uh, that fight, or I and it's not just me, it's I and Mark. We changed the game of the, of the MMA. Me being the fact that I was in you know, great condition and um, being a striker and what have you. So because of that, it, it kind of, because up until that point, it's, it was probably predominantly a grappler's game, whether you're judo, jujitsu, or wrestling or what have you. And then I come in. And have enough knowledge to to, to survive, and then to uh, able to push the game a lot more with the conditioning aspect. So primarily because I was in good condition, and I had and I wasn't I didn't freak out on the ground or whatever and stuff like that. that. Yeah, they're spot on. You know, and, and it's funny because I was watching the fight this morning and there was some key moments that I wrote, wrote down. But, you know, Coleman did not hesitate within the first minute. He went for that takedown. And I couldn't believe That's right. Back then, the headbutts were loud and he was just boom, 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 boom. I mean, not, like he looked like a bird, you know, eating his birds. He just boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and and most people would be like, whoa, you know, like, I mean, it would be too much because, I mean, Coleman knows how to headbutt somebody. You kept your composure through that. You know, you had your defense where you were blocking it with your your hand moving you know shifting your hips and and so it was it was interesting to see that uh and then him uh basically uh diminishing his energy levels you know little by little because by the time you got that half guard sweep i think it was like the ninth minute the crowd erupts you get up and then coleman is starting to you know realize oh man the the, oh shit moment, exactly right? yeah. cardio's coming into play Whoa. and now an advanced uh, a world-class kickboxer is about to tee off Sorry, what were you gonna say, sir? Well, the thing, the thing, the thing was with Mark. That fight was uh, if you have, if you if you saw the whole video, there was an interview we had before the pre hype interview, and when I made the statement about it, he took a girl with the hammer fist and all that stuff. Mark went into the fight very emotional. He was emotionally into the fight. I mean, he had all this anger and hatred, and not as a fighter towards me, and um, it just played out to actually to his disadvantage because he fights he fights with emotion. Mark's a pretty emotional person. Great guy. We ended up talking once in uh, Toronto when we were visiting Gary Goodrich. And, you know, he told me he didn't estimate the fight, or me. And um, he just, just came up through all the motion that's going to ground and pound me. Mm-hmm. But keep in mind, <clears throat> by the time I fought in MMA, I've already had, I mean, I've been fighting since 1980 in kickboxing. This isn't like wrestling. This isn't like jiu-jitsu. Dude, this is fighting where I'm getting hit continually throughout, throughout a career time. So me getting hit didn't really phase me. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of, okay, it hit, it hurts. Let's, let's keep going. As long as you're, as long as you're awake, or in other words, conscious, you're okay. You have a chance to get up or get out or whatever. So, again, the, 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 the big thing was actually the pre-hype uh, video actually probably wanted to fight for me mm-hmm. because <laughs> my, Mark was very emotional for that fight. 
Definitely. Or help. It contributed me. It, it contributed me, me winning the fight. I'll put it that way. Also around that time, that head kick you threw, um, that big John McCarthy stopped the and action, and he right. asked Mark, can you yeah. continue? I mean, it was that close to, I guess, you could have possibly been disqualified, uh, and Mark uh, elected to continue. But uh, I had forgotten about that. I was like, wow, that could have changed a little bit of, you know, your, you know, how the things we were talking about here the in outcome. your career, you're becoming a world champion and all that. But, yeah, the outcome and the tra tra trajectory of, of both guys. But the sad part is, if you look at the video, he wasn't on. He was. It was a bad call. McCarthy later on, I think John, in about maybe a year later or so, he realized he apologized because it was a bad call mm -hmm. um, because he was not touching his knee. His knee was on the ground. So, you know, if they would have called it, yeah, yeah. And again, a lot of heart goes, a lot of uh, uh, respect goes to Mark because he could have quit. He never quit. You know, he took that fight lightly, of course, but when he was tired, I mean, he was dog tired. I'd rather you knock me out than fight tired, in, in all seriousness. Mm -hmm. Because that's a bad place to be. And he didn't quit. So, you know, it, and it takes two for the fight to be. It's not just me and whatever I do, it's also how the other person. You know, contributes to the fight. So again, a lot of it goes to Mark as well. I want to go back to you said you saw Mark Coleman in Toronto, and so you hadn't seen him since the fight until you saw him when you saw him when you both visited Gary Goodrich. Uh, correct. We after after the fight, I never saw him again until we him and I took a vacation to go see. I was gonna, actually I was training Gary at that point. I see. Uh, training Gary for a fight, and uh, Mark happened to be there, and we sat and you know we talked a while again. He's a great guy. I mean, I don't have any personal personal against anybody in the business, you know, because I'm, I'm here to fight. You're here to fight. And it's just, to me, it's just that. It's not about hatred. I mean, if I don't like a person, that's different. But nobody in the, in, in the game have I ever hated. And Mark is in the same way, at least at least with me. He was very. He was a very cool guy when we talked. We talked for hours, actually. And, and uh, here's one thing I wanted to ask you, because, uh, you know, as this sport continues to grow, I've always said, um, it whatever it takes to sell a fight, you know, especially for the fighters that are driven by money. Sometimes you got to do this type of stuff, like what Coleman did, or excuse me, like what you did. You know, uh, a, a lot of those no, no, you, you can get. I did, it out of, I did it out of love of sport. I did it out of love of sport, not for money. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm a kind of person that talks noise no matter what. It doesn't matter if I got a payday or not. It's about confidence and cockiness. That's just me. But today's fighters, it's about whoop tickets, and you know, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you say or what you don't say. We have a contract. We're going to fight. So right. it doesn't really matter. It's just part of selling the game. It's just part of selling the game. But that was, again, if you if you interview me before any fight, I'm going to talk. I'm going to be very confident, not overly cocky, but definitely co cocky to a point. Yeah, it, it reminds me of Sugar Ray and Roberto Duran. They hadn't met up until they got put together by ESPN or somebody who did a thirty for thirty. Uh, and and you know, uh, Sugar Ray was somebody that that carried many feelings. Uh, ill feelings towards Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran, I guess he was, uh, he was okay with it either way. He, I think he he didn't take it as personal, but Sugar Ray did. But it's interesting how Mark opened up with you and and uh, you know the, just the conversation you're sharing with us. That's that's very very interesting because I always say you can always be friends later, but for now th it, this is a business and and uh, you know if if you if that's if that's what you're motivated by is money, then and you have to sell the fight one way or another because the sport's just too big now. And so uh, every fight has if, if you know for one fight to stand out, the people have to put something into it. The fans have to get into it. It's not like before where we waited three, four months for a fight card. Now it's every weekend, so you have to stand out one way or another. Well, yeah, and I guess that's that's the business. You know, it's a bit, listen. Uh, you, I, I'm, I can only speak like this for every generation of fighters. I I could say. For my, my generation in particular, it was a great time to be involved in. The money wasn't there. You did it because you love the sport. And, you know, you got what you got out of it. You know, uh, be it kickboxing, be it uh, fighting, or what have you. I'm talking about professional sports. I'm not talking about uh, jiu-jitsu as a sport necessarily because it's, it's, it's not the same. It's, it's not the same. Or, or judo or wrestling, they're not the same. But if you talk about money-making uh, ventures, then, you know, on, on, a, on a consistent level, uh, the fight game has definitely changed for the fighters. They're they're um, they're and, and, and there's nothing wrong with money motivated. It's just a matter. It's not all they're doing. If you pay them less money, they still would fight because that's what people typically enjoy. But some are more, some are able to generate more money because of talking. But you know that's just what it is. You know, not everybody has the ability. It's like it's like it's like Marshawn Lynch for the Seattle Seahawks. Not a talker, it's a doer. Okay, 
and it's, and you should and you should be compensated for what you do, not by what you talk. So I'm a firm believer of you know if I can talk and sell it, great. If I if I but if I don't have to form, in other words, if I talk noise, but I can't fight, what's the point? You know, all the talk in the world doesn't mean nothing. It's all about the uh, about the performance. So it goes both ways. If, if a promoter feels that he can sell the ticket with uh, talking, great. But at the end of the day, it's about the performance. So that's my big thing. I can talk, but I'm, I'm about performing. And that's the way most fighters typically are. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio. MMA Junkie Radio.